Good morning and welcome to this morning service. We appreciate that you are joining us in this diocesan service with His Grace the Archbishop. He is here with us and all of us who are watching and tuning in from home, you are welcome. Uh, I will I'll request Reverend Peter to come and start with a word of prayer. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we want to honor you and bless you and thank you for this wonderful morning that you've given unto us. We want to thank you for your mercies that are new for us with every morning. We want to thank you also for this opportunity that you have accorded to us to worship you, to bless your holy name, to be found in your presence. And I pray that, Father, as we continue with this service, that indeed by the power of the Holy Spirit of God, you will reach to each and every one of our hearts. You will minister to us through your word. Through the songs that we will sing, Lord, our spirits will be revived. And indeed we will say, surely the Lord is with us. May we indeed feel together being in your presence because you, O Lord, are with us by your Holy Spirit. Therefore, continue with us to the very end. May we say, and may we magnify your holy name for being present with us. And this we pray, believing and trusting in Jesus' name. Amen. I request that we join in together. Our procession of him is, Great is thy faithfulness. Indeed, great is thy faithfulness. <laughs>
with you. And also with you. We have come together, the people of God, drawn by his spirit, longing for his word, to praise the holy name of the Lord, to share in his glorious news of grace, to pray for our needs and the pain of the world, to rejoice in his love and be sent in his peace. We are heirs of the Father, joint heirs with the Son, renewed in the spirit. Together we are one. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sins in repentance and trust, God is faithful and just and will forgive our sins. So let us confess them to the Father. Let's take our seats. Together, eternal, eternal Father, Father, God, God of, of our ancestors. ancestors, before your power all things tremble. But through, through your Son, we approach your throne. We, we have done wrong and neglected to do right. Our sins weigh heavily on our hearts. Lord, have mercy. Count them not against us. Grant us the joy of forgiveness. And lighten our hearts with the glory of Christ, who died and rose again for us. Amen. Amen. The God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ rejoices at repentance and declares his acceptance. The dead are alive. The lost are found. His goodness and mercy will follow you all the days of your life, and you will live in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. 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 Blessed are those who live in your house. We will always be singing your praise. Praise the Lord. In the name of the Lord be praised. I request that we stand to glorify the Lord. Glory to the Father in whom all things began. Glory to the Son who became the Son of Man. Glory to the Spirit who inspires and renews, the Lord our God forever. Hallelujah. Before we get to the Jubilate song, let's do the correct for the Sunday correct for fourth Sunday after Trinity. Together correct for fourth Sunday after Trinity. O oh God, the protector of all that trust in thee, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us thy mercy, that thou, being our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we finally lose not the things eternal. Grant this, O Heavenly Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our Lord. Prayer of St. Francis together. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me so love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there, there is doubt, faith, faith, where, where there, there is despair, hope, where, where there, there is darkness, light, light where, where there is sadness, joy. O oh, Divine Master, grant that I may not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Now we join the Jubilate song. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Sing, I will enter, I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his court with and I will say, I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice. 
rejoice, for he has made me glad. Wana baraka, wale wa humba ho. Wana baraka, wale wa humba ho. Wana baraka, wale wa humba ho. Na yesu mwenye, we alisema. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Imba, hallelujah, hallelujah. Na yesu mwenye, we alisema. Wana ushindi, wale wa omba ho. Wana ushindi, wale wa omba ho. Wana ushindi, wale wa omba ho. Na yesu mwenye, we alisema. Wana amani, wale wa omba ho. Wana amani, wale wa omba ho. Wana amani, wale wa omba ho. Na yesu mwenye, we alisema. Imba, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Na yesu mwenye we ali. Imba, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, na yesu mwenye we alise ma. Indeed, we thank you, Lord. We honor you. We glorify your name. Indeed, there's peace to those who look up to you and those who pray to you. And so this day, I want to declare that all nations will come and worship you and praise your holy name, singing hallelujah. Amen. Mataifa yote yata kusanyika Meleza kebwa na muko So mataifa yote yata kusanyika Akimba bwana, akimba bwana, 
to thank you for the many, many things you have done unto us, even at the midst of what we are going through as peoples of the world. Lord, we want to adore you and thank you, Father, that this far you have been our Ebenezer. We are not here by our own strength or accord or intellect or capability in any form, but because you purpose to make us celebrate you this morning. Lord, we want to join the rest of our nation and families who are worshipping differently, not in the usual way, but at home individually and collectively as families. Some gathered in small ways in the places of worship, such as us. But Lord, today, as we bring our supplications and prayers to you, you will hear us, O oh God, and attend to every need that each one of us has. Lord, we bring our varied needs, needs of food security, needs of harmony, needs of peace, peace of mind, O oh God. We know many families are devastated, have, have lost hope. Many people have lost a sense of direction and are in a state of confusion. O oh God, we speak the blessing of your Holy Spirit that uh, correct any confusion and give us order. So speak peace to us, O oh God, in these times. Many of us are ailing and are feeling pain in hospitals and at homes. Lord, we bring everybody who is not feeling well this day, that you're going to be their healer, their Ebenezer. We speak a blessing to the medical practitioners who are managing situations in hospitals and uh, managing procedures for those who need them. And Lord, uh, seeking an understanding of things that are even new to them. Lord, we speak a blessing upon each one of them, especially as they manage this great pandemic of the world, coronavirus, oh God, which has devastated families and lives in our nation and nations of the world. That, Lord, we are going to emerge victorious. Give them precision in the understanding, oh God. Give scientists an opportunity to be able to discover a cure and even a vaccine to prevent, and all of us, Lord, an opportunity to be able to learn from the situation we have gone through and we are still going through. So, Lord, we pray that you will bring to an end this suffering because of coronavirus. It has locked the world. It has uh, devastated. It has sent the church uh, in dispersion and every other segment of society. Social life completely has been uh, disrupted in many ways. Livelihoods have been lost. Jobs and people are in a state of hopelessness. Lord, come to attend to us. And, Father God, we pray for the leadership of our nation. That is, they provide the much needed direction and leadership at this point in time. You are going to speak to them. Even the president, as they prepare what he will announce to the nation, which is an, in anticipation tomorrow, Lord, give him all the wisdom, give him all the understanding. Support him with the people with understanding who will give the best counsel and advice. We pray for the health ministry, those who are leading, those who are giving information on a daily basis, that you are going to, to protect them, but also to guide them so that they will guide Kenyans not into a panic mode, but uh, into a mode where we shall all be hopeful. Lord, make us today a community of hope, that we are going to grow in hope. We are going to look forward to you and uh, uh, turning to you, knowing that you are the God in heaven who never slumbers, and nothing can happen other than that which you know. So, God, you know why we are in this situation. And we ask of you to lead us through and uh, give us the best you can give us so that we may understand you deeper. And the uh, Lord, reveal the mysteries that you want us to understand in such a time. We know, Lord, in days of old, it was during moments of exile and bondage is when you have, your message was clear to the nation of Israel. Mm. Even in the New Testament times, Lord, when the church was under persecution and in dispersion, that's when the New Testament writers gave us your word, mm. which we now read as scripture. So, Father, even this moment, give us the freshness of your word that out of this, your word will be witnessed in a mighty way. Mm. And Father God, we pray that as we worship you today, may the supplications of all the prayers we bring to you reach you, O oh God. And if there is anything we have done against you, in word, in thought, and in deed, Lord, forgive us. Pardon us, O oh God. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, Lord, of all the things that we have wronged, which may have earned us the wrath of the things that are happening around us this time. So, God, may your name be blessed. Refresh us, O oh God, and refresh your church, even as we worship you today. And this is our prayer. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. He's a God who answers prayers. We thank God. Uh, I request that uh, we take our seats. We have the ministry of the word. The readers, please come. Our Old Testament reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 43 beginning to read from the first verse to the 21st verse. Isaiah 43, verse 1 to 21. But now, this is what the Lord says. He who created you, O Jacob, he who formed you, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have summoned you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I'll be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not see you, will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. I give Egypt for your ransom, Cush and Seba in your stead. Since you are precious and honored in my sight, and because I love you, I will give men in exchange for you, and people in exchange for your life. Do not be afraid, for I am with you. I will bring your children from the east and gather them from the west. I will say to the north, give them up. To the south, do not hold them back. Bring my sons from afar and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. Lead out those who have eyes but are blind, who have ears but are deaf, all the nations gather together and the peoples assemble. Which of them foretold this and proclaimed to us the former things? Let them bring in their witness, witnesses to prove they were right, so that, the, that others may hear and say, it is true. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, and my servant whom I have chosen, so that you may know and believe me and understand that I am he, before me, no God was formed, nor will there be one after me. I even, I, even I, am the Lord, and apart from me, there is no Savior. I have revealed and saved and proclaimed, I am not some foreign God among you. You are my witnesses, declares the Lord, that I am God. Yes, I am from ancient days, I am he. No one can deliver out of my hands when I act. Who can reverse it? This is what the Lord says, your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. For your sake I will send to Babylon and bring down as fugitives all the Babylonians in the ships in which they took pride. I am the Lord, your Holy One, Israel's creator, your King. And this is what the Lord says. He who made a way through the sea, a path through the mighty waters, who drew out the chariots and horses, the army and their enforcements together, and, lay, and they lay there never to rise again, extinguished, snuffed out like a wick. Forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland. The wild animals honor me the jackals and the olds, because I provide water in the desert and streams in the wasteland to give drink to my people, my chosen, the people I formed for myself, that they may proclaim my praise. And this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading is from the book of Romans, chapter 12, verse 1 to 12. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 to 12. Therefore I urge you, brothers, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. 
then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. For by the grace given me, I say to every one of you, do not think of yourself more highly than you ought, but rather think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the measure of faith God has given you. Just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. We have different gifts according to the grace given us. If a man's gift is prophesying, let him use it in proportion to his, his faith. If it is serving, let him serve. If it is teaching, let him teach. If it is encouraging, let him encourage. If it is contributing to the needs of others, let him give generously. If it is leadership, let him govern diligently. If it is showing mercy, let him do it cheerfully. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil, cling to what is good. Be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spiritual fervor serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. And this is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Uh, our preacher today is uh, Archbishop and the Bishop of Diocese of All Saints Cathedral, the most Reverend Dr. Jackson Olesapit, and we want to join together in the hymn, I Need Thee Every Hour, to prepare our hearts to hear the word of God. <laughs> Thank you. 
is now in the mission to rescue them and began to give them messages and oracles of hope. The portion read to us, Isaiah 43, is such a, a moment when the prophet was giving a nation under captivity hope. And clear words are very similar to our moments. Isaiah says, the Lord says, the nation of Israel, although you'll walk through deep waters, raging waters, floods that are life-threatening, that can sweep people away, I will take you through. Coronavirus to us is like a heavy flood, sweeping and ravaging life and normal life and taking it to the drain. The Lord is saying, you'll go through it. You will emerge victorious. He says, even if you walk through flames of water or fire, fire will not consume you. Not, not even the smell of uh, smoke will be found in your clothings or around you because the Lord will protect. Coronavirus has been fire around us, burning businesses, disrupting everything and dashing hope. And the Lord is saying, we will emerge on the other side when we trust in him and become a people of hope we shall not even have the, the smell of smoke the smell of the fires will be behind us it will not be traced because God is going to deliver us he is a God of comfort and Isaiah 40 onwards are all full of words of comfort comfort, comfort my people the prophet says our message today is entitled Becoming a Community of Hope. Becoming a People of Hope. These moments have dashed hope in every way. I traverse sometimes going from here to the rural and to the rural to here because of the nature of the work that we do, bringing peace and harmony in communities that are clashing. And what we see even in the media is complete disruption of life and even what would have been a blessing of families sticking together and being together because the virus has brought us home, new challenges are emerging. If you watch on TV last night, there were those cases of people who have turned to each other and uh, home-based violence, gender, uh, children and parents, the war is enormous because people are idle. And they even don't know how to face each other anymore, even when they are together. So the would have been a blessing of togetherness is presenting a different scenario. So where is hope? Even when we gather and congregate as families, we still fight within the family. It is only turning to God. It's when we shall find true and meaningful hope. And the, uh, uh, the words of the prophets are so clear to us that we must choose to listen to God. The Bible is so explicit that when we turn to him, we become a people of hope because hope is only found and can only be found in him. The main text and word in this portion of the scripture we read is the Lord telling us when he shows up, and deal with our situation, he urges us not to remember the former things. Do not dwell in the past. Forget it. It will not help us, for God is going to do a new thing. I want to uh, join the prophets and say, after COVID, a new world will emerge. A new community will emerge. A new people will emerge. People will begin to see things as God sees them. For what has happened in the past is that humanity has led itself into a situation where they were turning away from God and thought human nature is the end in itself. Corona has proved to us and to the world that humanity is so limited. We can't go beyond the limitations of what God can present. 
And therefore, we are reminded that uh, when we turn to him, God is going to give us a renewal, an opportunity to see things in a better way. Now, key lessons from this text, which I can also allude to the second reading in the Paul's letter to the Romans. The first lesson is choose to forget the old. The old that we are called to forget is both the good and the bad. The good old days have a tendency of dragging us and making us not to see the new possibilities in store for us. They deny us a chance to reach out for new horizons and higher goals. If you are preoccupied with the good old days, you will never see the new and greater possibilities that God has in store for you. Maybe as a church and as a community, we reach a point in which we were so comfortable with what we called then the normal. But God has challenged us that what we are used to is disrupted. Our streams of income are disrupted. Our normal gathering, our normal way of doing things, our pastoral care and visitation is no longer visible. But God is saying, turn towards me and begin to see the new I have for you. The bad as well has potential to make us stick to the pain of yesteryears. Failures and disappointments, we can either choose to be caught up in the pain and failures of yesterday or choose to learn from them and move to the new that God has in store for us. So the word forget as used in the context does not necessarily mean erasing from the mind. It means choosing not to be tied down by present and past happenings. God was calling the Israelites not to be preoccupied by the victories of yesteryears. The deliverance from Egypt is an example. And that was not enough. They cannot cling to that delivery alone. They need a new delivery from exile. To become a community of hope, we must choose to somehow forget the physical and emotional economic and spiritual pains caused by this pandemic. Yes, the pandemic has caused a lot of emotional pain, physical pain, emotional pain, spiritual pain. But we must choose not to cling to that and emerge to see things as God sees them. Yes, we must draw lessons from this experience, but we cannot afford to dwell on them forever. Choose to see the new is the second point I want us to learn from. Choose to see the new. To become a community of hope, the Israelites were not only called to forget the old and the former, but to behold the new as well. In verses 15 to 21, it pictures a new exodus from a people once again oppressed just as the Israelites had been slaves in Egypt before the Exodus, they will cry to God and again he will hear and deliver them. A new Exodus will take place through a new wilderness. The past miracles were nothing compared to what God will do for his people in the future. Even us, we are waiting for the greatest miracles of our times through this pandemic. To become a community of hope, God invites us to see the new, to behold it. This demand that we create a new vision, an imagination for a better and a bigger tomorrow. Vision is everything. Vision and a greater imagination are recipe for new and better community of hope. The true sense, as uh, Albert Einstein says, the true sense of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. It's not how much information we have. Today we have a lot of information about what is happening around us, even about COVID. But it is the imagination of the future that will take us forward, not the, the amount of information we possess. It is a, the amount of imagination that we can put into such a time. 
we must begin to envision the new possibilities for mission evangelism and the new opportunities we have to create and we have to create new communities of hope. I was speaking to the Archbishop of Canterbury last week. He was telling me that uh, in UK, in one of their cathedrals, before COVID, the normal physical gatherings were at most 150 to 200 people on a Sunday. But during COVID, their online streams registered 10,000 to 15,000 people. What a new way of reaching out. The message has an opportunity to reach out even such a time as this. In the New Testament, we have been reminded by Paul in the letter to the Romans that we shall be given different gifts, brothers and sisters. This is a moment to use those different gifts. And let me tell you, those gifts are not residing among the clergy or bishops or the archbishops. It is residing in every member of the congregation. Look at what is happening today. Our young people are the experts to, uh, uh, connecting us to Zoom and other modes of communication in a way that has never happened before. Their gifts are much more needed in the church today more than ever before. As we look into the distant future, beyond the pandemic, what are we seeing is a big question. What are you seeing today as you watch us in this service? What are you seeing as a family, as an individual? What opportunities are presenting themselves? How are you going to do business differently? How are you going to manage your family differently? How are you going to take your children who have been disrupted a whole year? Their education is in limbo, probably up to next year. How are you going to reorient them again into a new world space and a new sphere that God has presented during this pandemic period? I challenge you to develop a greater sense of vision and imagination that matches the promise God has in store for you, for your family, for your church, and for our national leaders for the nation. It depends when we see such sharp divisions in our national life among our leaders instead of them coming together to fight as a team so that we shall march together as a people. The church cannot afford to be divided at such a time. We must click together and come together so that we provide the much needed leadership and direction. As a church, we must see the new possibilities we have for ministry and mission. We must see and seize the moment. We must continue to be the salt and the light of the world as Matthew 5, 14 to 16 remind us. You are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand. And it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, Matthew reminds us, or Jesus in those words reminds us, let your light shine before men, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Point number three, choose change over confusion. We are in a very big confusion as a people, as individuals, families, and communities. But we must choose not to remain in confusion, but to begin to see and embrace change and see the possibilities that the, the change normal is going to give us. Change is the only permanent thing in life. Philosophers say so. To be a community of hope, we must embrace change. We must adopt and adapt to the new way of life. Success in life is premised on our ability to adopt and adapt to change. It is neither the brightest species nor the, the, nor the strongest that survive, but the ones that embrace change. Otherwise, one is born to miss the future. These are words from one of the greatest president of the United States, uh, J.F. Kennedy. The Apostle Paul, writing to the church in Rome, admonished Christians to be changed and transformed by the renewing of their minds. That was our second reading. In light of COVID-19 pandemic, we must be willing to rethink 
reimagine our ways of socializing, but more importantly, how we do ministry and build communities of faith and hope into the future. Moving forward, we must leverage on technology and say the use of virtual space for ministry and service. This is going to stay with us, so we better adopt to the new normal. To become community of hope, we must choose to forget the old. We must choose to see the new. We must choose change over confusion. As I wind up and illustrate this uh, sermon, a number of years ago, researchers performed an experiment to see the effect of hope, the effect hope has on those undergoing hardship. Two sets of laboratories, laboratory rats were placed in separate tubes, tubs of water. The researchers left one set in the water and found that within an hour, they had all drowned. The other rats were periodically lifted out of the water and returned them into the water. When that happened, the second set of rats swam for over 24 hours. Why? Not because they were given a rest, but because they suddenly had hope that somebody will come and lift them out of the water at some point. So they kept on swimming. Those animals somehow hoped that if they could stay afloat just a little longer, someone would reach down and rescue them. If hope holds such power for unthinking rodents, how much greater should it affect our lives? May God bless you. May God bless us. Let us become a community of hope. When we cling to hope, we shall survive. We shall emerge to new horizons. In the name of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Your Grace, for that great message. Indeed, there is hope. Yes, there is. As we stand, we turn to our prayer books, page 12. We stand together with Christians throughout the centuries and throughout the world to affirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of Virgin Mary, suffered at Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we have come to a time where we want to give to the Lord. Uh, those who are watching, um, the Mpesa number is on the screens. Uh, also, those who, are, those who are members of St. Francis, please give. Those who are members of other churches, please feel free to also give to your churches at this time as we join together in the offertory hymn of When We Walk With The Lord.
name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for these gifts that your people have given unto thee for the furtherance of thy kingdom. Gracious God, we pray that you bless the works of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. www.stfranciscaren.com Prayer request We continue to remind you that send your prayer request on prayer line at stfranciscaren.com If any you need office communication write to us email info at stfranciscaren.com and uh, engage with us also on Twitter at St. Francis and Thread Number Diocesan Live Service and Facebook and YouTube. Um, we are also reminding ourselves, those who are members of St. Francis and beyond, on Wednesdays we have what we call the family altar. You are invited also to join in. Again, let's continue with the hope. Let's continue to hold each other in prayer, in a word of encouragement, whatever it is that we can do to keep hope going, please let us do it. As we stand, now to him who is able to immeasurably do more than we ask or imagine. According to his power that is at work within us, to him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations forever and ever. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Thank you. Our recessional hymn is William Anka. Hold. Mm -hmm. 